Okay, I made it to Mexico City. This is the balcony uh, right outside my room. I was so excited to take this trip to Mexico City when I did and with who I went with. That is a, an amazing story in and of itself, but I'll explain that in another video because I know you clicked on this video to see the tilma of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Are you ready? Here's the Tilma of Our Lady of Guadalupe. I was so excited to see Our Lady of Guadalupe in person, but for those of you who don't know the story of this miraculous image, let's get into it. Okay, so Juan Diego, he was a local Indian man, local to Mexico. He was an adult convert to Catholicism and he would travel very far to go to mass in the city. He lived outside of the city in, you know, one of these poor towns and he walked up a hill to get to mass and you can walk up that hill today but they, you know, put in stairs um, so it's easier and he saw Our Lady of Guadalupe. He saw Mother Mary and she appeared to him and asked him to ask the bishop to build a church um, where he was standing, you know, a shrine. And so he went to his bishop and told him and his bishop didn't believe him. And so Juan Diego um, you know, went back to the hill, it's Tepayac Hill, and Mother Mary appeared to him again. And, you know, he explained that the bishop didn't believe him and he needed, you know, some evidence or proof to get the bishop to believe him so he would build a church on that hill. So Mother Mary performed a miracle. She had Castilian roses bloom on Tepayac Hill and those roses, one, were not in season because this was on December 12th in 1531. December 12th is just a few days before winter starts in Mexico. Winter starts December 21st. So these roses were not in season nor were they native to the region. These were Spanish roses that bloomed in Mexico. So that was a miracle already. So she instructed Juan Diego to put these roses in his cloak. Um, you'll hear me say tilma. The tilma is just the cloak of Indian origin. And so he followed her instructions, gathered the roses in his cloak, in his tilma, and brought them to the bishop. And when he brought them to the bishop, he let his tilma open, let the roses spill out, and this miraculous image of Mother Mary, the Mother of Christ, Our Lady of Guadalupe, appeared on his tilma. And that's not all. The miracle continues. Okay, first of all, the fabric is of cactus fiber. And that cactus fiber ordinarily only lasts 25 to 30 years. And, you know, at first, um, this tilma wasn't even protected. It was left exposed for 116 years, and it was exposed to radiation from candles, also exposed to humid and salty air, also pilgrims kissing it, and a lot of human contact. Um, but miraculously, the tilma is still in good condition with the cloth it was made of, and you know again it should have disintegrated by now this cloth typically lasts 25 to 30 years and it has now lasted nearly 500 years and in 1787 a duplicate was created on a similar fabric by an artist but that duplicate faded in just eight years because of the hot and humid climate of Mexico. So the fact that this tilma exists at all is 
a miracle. Okay, I'm going to try to get through the rest of the miraculous properties quickly. Okay, the back side of the cloth is rough and coarse as cactus fiber is, while the front side where the image is is soft as silk. NASA scientists have no explanation as to how the image got on the cloth. There are no brush strokes or stretch marks on it. No human uh, can create this image. Okay, the colors of the image float above the surface of the tilma at a distance of three tenths of a millimeter or one hundredth of an inch. If you want to get an idea of that, um, just Google decimal inch ruler and they can zoom in on a ruler and show you that. Uh, when the cloth is examined at a distance less than 10 inches, colors totally disappear. The pigment of the fabric used were from no known source, whether natural, animal, mineral, or vegetable. After filtering and processing the digitized images reveal that the image was painted in one step. There were no sketches, no corrections, no brush strokes or sizing, and no protective varnish of any sort covering the surface. The image changes in color slightly depending on the angle of viewing, a phenomenon known as iridescence, a technique that cannot be reproduced with human hands. What and how the colors of the image appeared on the cloak remains a complete scientific mystery. The tilma maintains a constant temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, that of a living person. Carlos Fernandez del Castillo, a gynecologist, examined the image and he indicated that the stage of pregnancy that Mary is in is, would be December 9th and would coincide with Jesus's birth to occur on Christmas Day. He placed a stethoscope below the black band at the waist of Our Lady and he heard rhythmic repeating heartbeats at 115 beats per minute, the same as that of a baby in the womb. The stellar arrangement that appear on the mantle of Our Lady accurately displays the various constellations of the Mexican sky the day of the apparition, which was the winter morning solstice of December 12, 1531, Saturday at 1026 a.m. The star map is in the reverse. You know, the cardinal axis rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise provides a view of the constellations from beyond them as it would be seen looking through them toward the earth. Hopefully I explained that well. It's basically the stars are on the image the way that God would see the stars looking at us, if that makes sense. Okay, let's get into Our Lady's eyes. Oh my gosh, I love to read about Our Lady's eyes in this image. It was discovered that the reflection of Bishop Juan de Sumarraga looking in astonishment in the pupil of Our Lady's eyes. When exposed to light, Our Lady's eye contracts and dilates when light is withdrawn. Optometrists have determined that Our Lady's eyes are alive on the tilma. A Japanese optometrist, when he looked at Our Lady's eyes through a microscope, he fainted and he said, the eyes are alive and they're looking at me. In 1976, some 20 doctors confirmed orally and in writing the unexplainable presence of a man with a beard in the cornea and lenses of the Virgin. In 1979, Dr. Jose Astetonsman, PhD, a Peruvian ophthalmologist and an expert at IBM in the digital processing of images and who for over 20 years studied the tilma, digitally enlarged the image of Our Lady's eyes by 2,500 times the actual size under extremely high resolution and had found not only a single figure, but images of the witnesses present when the tilma was first revealed before the bishop in 1531, including a small family group, 13 persons in all. In addition, Dr. Tonsman used digital technology similar to that used in the images received from satellites and space probes in transmitting visual information. The image of the Bishop Sumarraga in the eyes of Our Lady was also enlarged a thousand times than the actual size to be able to see what is reflected in his eyes. The eye of the Bishop contains the image of Juan Diego opening his tilma before the 
the bishop. The size of the image is a quarter of a micron, which is a fourth of a millionth of a millimeter. What? Okay, let's talk about the miracles attributed to the image. Okay, on December 26, 1531, only days after the miraculous image of Our Lady of the Tilma of Juan Diego, the Chichimeca Indians were celebrating the newly built chapel with dancing and bows and arrows, and one of the Indians was struck in the neck, immediately killing him. They carried him within the chapel and laid him beneath the sacred image and prayed fervently for a miracle. Shortly after removing the arrow from his neck, the man regained consciousness and rose, completely healed. Also, miraculously, nine million Indians were converted to Christianity within just a few short years. The conversion of Indians brought a halt to the pagan rituals of human sacrifice. Uh, the Indians in this area, not only did they sacrifice humans, they also sacrificed dogs and cougars. Also, Spaniards and Mexicans were mortal enemies, and after this tilma was gifted to them, they embraced one another. Also, on November 14, 1921, a Spanish anarchist, Luciano Perez, planted 29 sticks of dynamite in a flower arrangement of the altar under the tilma. When it exploded, all the marble, altar, and the railing in the floor were broken. However, the normal glass which encased the tilma and the tilma itself was remarkably intact. Now the tilma is preserved in bulletproof glass in the Basilica of Guadalupe, but that is an amazing miracle. Also in 1785, a worker who was cleaning the glass spilled nitric acid solvent on the image on the tilma. Oh my gosh, I'd feel so bad if that were me. In a few days, the tilma self-restored. There are a few stains outside of the image, but the actual image of Our Lady restored. So now you know why I was so excited to see the miraculous tilma of Our Lady of Guadalupe in person. I'm sure I didn't even share all of the miraculous properties of the tilma. And just so you know, Catholics do not worship inanimate objects. We do not worship this tilma, but we know from the evidence that no human could paint this image. We know that this is an image given to us by God. Anyway, I want to talk a bit about the church. I love the setup, the architecture. So here I am at Mass, and you can see the tilma right behind the altar there. I'm sitting to the right, and Mass is going on all the time. But if you want to see the tilma up close, you can go under the Mass, like I am right here, and see the tilma up close while people are in mass above you and they have these moving walkways like you see in the airport so that everyone can see the tilma and you know no crowds form and block others from seeing the tilma which is crucial for days like December 12th the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe when millions of people come. There's the new church where it is. Here's the old church and there were older churches before that. The reason why the churches keep being rebuilt is because the land is sinking. You can clearly see in this photo the church is tilted and sinking. And at the top of the hill, which you can go up, you can see both the old and the new church. It's a lovely view. And at the top of the hill, there is the shrine and there is adoration there, which was lovely. So yeah, if you go, I definitely recommend walking up to Pike Hill so you can go to adoration. And the reason why I'm posting about Our Lady of Guadalupe today is because today, November 9th, is the day that you should start your preparation to consecrate yourself to Jesus through Mary if you want to consecrate yourself on Our Lady of Guadalupe's feast day. And I know I'm posting this a little late, but if you see this on November 10th, you can do the preparation for both November 9th and 10th on the 10th, and you will be good to go to consecrate yourself to Jesus through Mary on Our Lady of Guadalupe's 
feast day. And I'm not going to talk about uh, Marian consecration right now because I've already made two videos about Marian consecration. So definitely check out those videos if you are interested in that. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I am so blessed to have been able to see the Tilma of Our Lady of Guadalupe in person, especially at the time that I did, and especially the person that I traveled with. It was very special. I will share about that in a future video. Anyway, I hope you have a beautiful day. God bless you, and until next time, bye.